too. And, 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 like, to, uh, like if you were trying to find it like, ten years ago, it'd be pretty difficult. But nowadays, it's pretty popular. Hey, Kiki. Okay, we're recording. So. I know. So I'm saying hi to Kiki. <laughs> Welcome to Deep Hurting Episode Two. Is it Episode Two? Yes. Yes. Although it's kind of episode four because we made the two test episodes that were kind of crappy. No. Oh. Not that the first episode was good. No. It's always about learning. Yeah. Become better later. Later. Yeah. So I'm Guy, aka Super Deformed. And I'm Chris, aka uh, Bobo the Magic One. So what have you been watching or doing or whatever? I've been watching uh, YouTube videos of. The, a devout Christian talking about how he became an atheist. Uh, I've been reading a little bit more of The Selfish Gene and uh, playing Kirby's Epic Yarn because that all makes sense together. Yeah, it does. Because Kirby is Jesus. <laughs> yes. He's the Messiah of Yarnland. And Sonic's pink eyes. Sonic has pink eyes? <laughs> no, there's a stupid picture on the internet where... Oh, yeah, I know. That's <laughs> yeah, just... so what you've been doing. I don't know, I've been watching too much. I've been trying to finish watching the first box set of Dirty Pair. Ooh, good. Yeah, it's like, it's really cute. Yeah. It's just like a lighthearted little whimsical science fiction tale. Nothing, they... nothing really serious about it. Don't they, like, blow up a planet every time they leave? They leave a lot of damage. Oh, they're just collateral damage? Yeah, but it's like they're misunderstood sometimes. Because they're the only people that could stop this crisis. But even though they stopped the crisis, which would have been way worse, uh -huh. they're like, oh, you dirty pair. Poor dirty pair. Yeah, they hate when they, they're called that. Did they hate that? Yeah, that's not their name. They're, they're the lovely angels, but people refer to them as the dirty pair because, you know. They destroy everything. Instead of like calling them like those two disgusting bitches or like property damage girls or something. The Japanese just decided to go, Dirty Pair. That's weird. Yeah, they, they butcher our language, and I don't mind butchering theirs. That's okay. Take that, Japan. You have to get back somehow. Yeah, so last night we watched this little movie called Streets of Fire. Amazing. Yeah, I didn't, I've, I've never even heard of this movie. Yeah, I, guess I, was, I. I guess I was too busy watching Terminator in 1984. I was too busy, you know, just, you know, not sucking my foot. <laughs> I was busy being six, so that just means I was running around, catching glimpses of Conan the Barbarian on my grandpa's big screen TV, and getting chased out the, the living room. That's a fantastic movie. Yeah, that's the, the first thing I remember on the big screen TV is Conan biting the, the head. stupid buzzard head. <laughs> like, what? Uh, oh. I don't watch Benji movies on it. That's good. I like that. Yeah. But yeah, this movie was... I, I never even knew this movie existed. Yeah, I've heard about it from other anime podcasts, and you say, oh, it's so influential, it inspired Bubblegum Crisis, which, yeah, pretty much did. It the did. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the opening scene is pretty much the first scene of Bubblegum Crisis, <laughs> only instead of, like, you know, the, the near future in, in Japan, it's it's another time. It's the 80s past. Yeah. Instead the, of 80s future, 80s past. It's like the 1950s, 80s, yes. kind of like with Back to the Future was going for with time travel, but they just mashed them together, so it was kind of like Cool World in a way. Kinda. It was definitely cool. Yeah. And definitely a world known only as Chicago. <laughs> Chicago, New York, California. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a pretty fantastic movie. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I'm trying to find my notes. Okay. So we can just not jump around the plot like we did with MD Geist. That sounds like, like a plan. Kind of go in order. To where it makes sense, although that might be part of our charm, but I don't. Know. I doubt that. <laughs> yeah, no enough feedback. All five people have downloaded the first episode. Am I one of them? Uh, most probably, me and you're like three. Hell yeah. So yeah, another time, another place. Another time, another place. This is the '80s past that we were talking about. Kind of like Blade Runner is '80s future. This movie is '80s past. <laughs> 1950s, 80s. Yes. So you have like this concert starting up, like this 1950s themed theater. With everyone All these dressed people up. dressed 50s style. Yeah, but then this then this girl gets on stage. She starts singing 80s music. 
And but the band is all 50s style, but playing 80s music. Yeah. That's just, weird. That's a wonderful mm, movie. I, yeah. I, I, this is not a bad thing. What yeah. We're, what we're saying is not bad. Yeah, it's billed as a rock and roll fable, which I'm like, who cares? Yeah, this rock and roll fable thing, I don't care about. This movie yeah. is just kick ass. This movie is about not giving a fuck. Yes, <laughs> it is not. Yeah, so Diane Lane's playing this girl, Ellen, singing, like, her rendition of uh, Kung Wah Hurricane or whatever. And uh, all of a sudden, in the middle of the show, like, these bikers show up, and one of them's Willem Dafoe, looking all, you know, creepy and Willem Dafoe-like. <laughs> <clears throat> Look just like the vampire. Yeah, looked like the vampire in Shadows from the vampire, kind of. After she's finished singing, they rush on the stage and kidnap her and take off and... You know, I have to admit that they were pretty nice because they they're like, whoa, 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 don't kidnap her yet. Like they walked in a good bit, like halfway into her, like to the song, yeah. And they waited. They're like, let's it's just like, enjoy this song like, for a man, moment. Man, this raping is going to be real good. <laughs> real good. Let's, let's let her get let's let her tire herself out singing this song. Yeah, they get up there, and then once when she finished singing, that's when Willem Dafoe was like, go, go. Yes, and only one to, to standing in their way is a young Bill Paxton. The young Bill Paxton gets in the way it is prompt- with his <laughs> with his plaid. With his face, he decides to, <laughs> to face someone's fist. Oh, oh, he's trying. He's trying his a uh, <laughs> face to fist uh, martial arts. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, that was yeah, it. We just butchered that joke. That was a bad joke. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so we have young Bill, Bill Paxton just like falls down. And another thing that we saw before the concert started, it had to be Gary Busey. It had to it be looked Gar- li- It looked like him. There's a Gary Busey in the front. I don't know if this is true or not. If you guys yeah, have seen like s- this, and if you know this is Gary Busey, let us know, because it looked like Gary Busey. Yeah, outside the theater before the, the concert started. We're like, was it Gary Busey? But maybe it looked more like crazy Gary Busey today instead of Gary Busey circa 1984. Well, no, no. I mean, like, if you watch, like, those old movies with Gary Busey, I mean, it was thinner then. Yeah. Just like he's, like, all drugged thin now. Yeah, he's all... I don't know. He went on Celebrity Fickle and lost a lot of weight. God. He just destroyed. He lost, like, what, 100 pounds in one week? Yeah, something stupid. <laughs> he's like, what did you do? He's like, I did nothing but play in the sand <laughs> and drink nothing. I just did nose candy all week. <laughs> Nose candy. Uh. <laughs> anyway, Streets of Fire. This this film was directed by Walter Hill, famed director of such wonderful movies as IMDb, The Warriors, Warriors, yeah. yeah. Forty Eight Hours, Another Forty Eight Hours, Red Heat, which was a rehash of Forty Eight Hours instead of like a black guy it was a Russian guy instead of crazy ass Nick Nolte it was James Belushi. What and, other ones? And Brewster's Millions. Oh, so we, and we need to do that one later. Yeah, I'm gonna rush that. And Geronimo of American Legend. Oh, and Deadwood. He directed the pilot of Deadwood. So he has a, he has a thing for westerns a little bit, or at least western feel. Yeah, well, he directed a few other western movies like The Long Riders and whatever. But yeah, um, so after uh, so Diane, she gets kidnapped by so, these uh, street punks. What is their what's the name of the big gang? Um, the Bruisers or. The douchebags? I forgot. Douchebags. Leather. Dominatrix. Um, oh, the bombers. The bombers. Yeah, the bombers. Hmm, not to be mistaken with the boomers. No boomers. But, uh, so they, they kidnap her, and there's one woman in the audience who seems to be more upset than the rest of the people, including the one woman who threw a purse at them. As they completely destroyed the town, she was screaming something like, "You stupid! You stupid!" <laughs> oh no! One of the best scenes is like when they're driving off with 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 the woman, with the, the singer lady. Like this is like this black chick. This is all pissed off. I was like, "No, don't do it!" And she threw a purse at one of them. <laughs> he stops. The guy like kind of on the motorcycle dodges the purse being thrown at him, and then his buddy falls up right behind him and like slows down and <laughs> kicks the purse that's on the ground away from her just to be a dick. And there's just little little things like that just make the movie wonderful. Yeah, little moments. And so this other woman who seems more upset emotionally other than just shocked. Yeah, uh, I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why. And then she she sends a telegraph to some dude named Tom her Cody, played by Michael Pare or 
however yeah. you pronounce that letter. Pere? Pere. But, so they sends a letter <laughs> off to Tommy? Yeah, uh, well, not Tommy, Tom. They Tom. just call him Tom. Tom. Tom, Tom, the Tom, Tom. So Tom comes in on the subway or the uh, train... Or yeah, like, like the next day or next week, whatever. I think it's the next day. It seems like the next day. Yeah, maybe he gets a couple of days. But uh, he shows up. Looking all pretty boy badass in his duster and looking like he's ready to kick some ass, I guess. Yeah, I think it, I, he doesn't look like he wants to go find someone to kick ass on. He's just more like, yeah, uh, if what, something, what, what do you want? Yeah, what do you want? So he shows up the, gr- the girl who was upset at diner. And uh, she sees him, and she's excited that her brother's here. Yay! Well, at first, you really don't know if it's her brother. I think she... I don't know. Maybe. Because I was like, what? They like they hook up or something? Because she looks a little darker than he does. Yeah, I just... I don't know. No, and then, um... So while they're, like... she's He's, like, chilling out at the... At the, at the diner, diner she works at. Eating, or, drinking I mean, a coffee, you know, just not... You know, just generally not giving a fuck. Because that's just the way he is. Man, a few words. These, these group of, like, 1950s uh, cartoonish thugs show up, <laughs> saying that they're there for a good time. They're there for a good time, so and they, they want to eat. So they go, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I want to go get laid. I want to go to a fucking diner. <laughs> Man, I need to get my dick wet. Let's go to a fucking Waffle House. Oh, oh. oh. oh no. <laughs> for you guys that don't understand what Waffle House is... Imagine. Oh, oh no, they, they, they know. They they should know. If they don't, they need to just, you know. Type it in YouTube, you'll find something. <laughs> yeah, sure. Waffle House. Waffle House. That's Waffle House, as we call it. <laughs> so, th- these guys decide to start picking a fight, and one of them grabs a ketchup bottle and uses it kind of threatening Tom's sister. So Tom yeah. gets up and casually takes off his duster. I think it's a duster, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that, that jacket he's wearing the whole movie that's yeah. dusty. Yeah, he's wearing <laughs> a duster. So he's taking that off, and he reveals he's just wearing, like, suspenders and a wife beater or something. Yeah, just a normal, like, shirt. Like, like he's dressed totally like a cowboy. Yeah, a cowboy. From, like, a western. It's funny. Yeah, so he... But he has, like, a normal 80s haircut and, like, really crappy stubble. Like, you can, like, you can see he's just straining to grow a beard. Yeah. And so he's taking off the duster, and the guys are like, what, you want something? You want some of this? He's like, shut up, or like, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure, come bring Bitch. it. And so, like, the one guy, like, the leader of the gang, I guess, whips out his, his freaking butterfly knife, looking all like, ooh, look, I would have cut you. And he's like, yeah, that's great. So, like, the guy kind of attacks him. Tom just, like, <laughs> takes the knife, Takes the knife from him, slaps him, plays with the butterfly knife and then puts it back into his hand fully extended and the guy goes to stab him again and so he just starts he just slaps him unconscious <laughs> he slaps the knife wielding man unconscious no balling up the fist just slaps him just slaps him over and over <laughs> and then and then his gang goes to fight him so he grabs a coat rack and proceeds to beat the ever loving crap out of all of them Yep, and knocking them out the window, destroying the window, whatever. I, I guess. And I as guess, it, I guess his sister's boss is cool. As they begin to go to their getaway car, he proceeds to chase them more. <laughs> so they run away from the getaway car and just run down some alleyway, never to be seen from again. Thus, he acquires his car. <laughs> yes, and this will be his car throughout the entire movie. <laughs> this is In fact. It's understood that it's for the rest of his life. <laughs> yes, this is his car. <laughs> This is his new like, car. He's like, cool, I got a car. And so, what do you do when you get a car from a gang of thugs? You yeah. gotta break it in. So he proceeds to take his sister, yeah, he's oh, like, who is smart enough to say, you better fix him that window. <laughs> he's like, shut up. Shut up and get in the car, <laughs> let's roll. So they drive home, and all, all the driving home, he's peeling out, driving like a maniac. <laughs> Speeding through like a narrow pedestrian filled street. Cops pull him over. He just brushes him off. The sister goes, Come on. He hasn't been back in a while. Be easy on him. And the cops are like, Yeah, whatever. No, they, the older cops are like, I know who you are. And if you do anything bad again, you go into jail. And he's like, Fuck you. I think he's, no, he's called, he says asshole. 
<laughs> yeah, he just calls him an asshole. Like, there's there's not a lot of cursing in this movie. But, huh. it's, a, but it's understood that they should be cursing. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, everyone's really abrupt with each other. And I, I love that about this. <laughs> so, he goes and drops his sister off at the, at the house. And then and he, goes, he, he decides goes to go to a, to a bar. It's to meet up with Bill Paxton, the bartender, who wishes to join his gang, which <laughs> he doesn't have yet. Yes, he's like, let's go do what we used to do. We used to have such a good time together. Now, there's, Oh, yeah, and his sister like asked him to go free Ellen or whatever. Oh, yeah, but that's he's going to go get drunk first. Yeah, he's like, yeah, whatever. So he has to. He should, the sister told him to come there to save Ellen, but he's like, I'm just going to go get drunk. Because I'm just going to do that. And then tomorrow morning we'll talk about all this. Yeah. <laughs> so she goes to bed. He goes to get drunk. Bill Paxton offers to join his gang. While, and, while they're talking, this like shaggy-haired, blonde-haired woman... Who looks is, almost hobo-ish. Looks, is hobo-ish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yells at Bill Paxton, like, hey, asshole, give me something to drink. And Bill Paxton's like, what if I think you had too much to drink? <laughs> it makes her pay. And then after... She pays. She decks. Him. No, she, he then says, "I don't want you to be here anymore because I don't like your face." And then <laughs> she decks him, jumps over the bar, sees how cool the main character is, asks him, "What do you drink?" He says tequila because he's a badass. And then she's she like, hands him a bottle of tequila, and then they become a gang. <laughs> she joins this party. Like, it, from the get-go, she's like, you're not my type. You're not my type. We're not sexual... But, like, they're pretty much like, nothing's <laughs> gonna happen romantically between these two. And then you look at her, you go, I don't think she likes guys anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any man is her type. But, yeah, but the, she's a very cool person. She also doesn't give a fuck. Her name is McCoy. <laughs> so we refer and to her. That's all they refer to her as McCoy. McCoy. So they leave, and he says, "McCoy, what skills you got?" She's like, "I used to be a soldier. I'm really good with guns. I'm really good at fixing cars, and I can drive pretty much anything, <laughs> just like a damn video game." Yeah, just like RPG fashion. She just states her freaking <laughs> vocation. She's the engineer. With, with weaponry. I don't know. Yeah. So she asks if she could crash at his place. He's like, sure, just, you can crash on the couch. <laughs> you can crash on the couch, and she goes, that's the way I like it. <laughs> yeah. Or cause something. Because she doesn't, she doesn't go that way, apparently. And yeah. so when, when they finally get home, she goes to bed, he sees that she's carrying a gun, and he's like, don't you point that thing at me. <laughs> Screw <laughs> you. He's like, if, if I point at you, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I love the dialogue. It's just snappy I mean, and asshole Oh my god. I can't even reenact these scenes. Yeah, and so, so, he goes to bed. When he's about to go to bed, then he talks to his sister. No, he, he, he realizes he wants to save the girl. Yeah, that, yeah he's, he's having his little flashback or whatever. He, he's looking at a picture of her at the house in his old wallet or something. And he just goes, yeah, I'll, I'll save her. I guess. Yeah, I guess that'll be good to do. And so he goes to tell his sister who's sleeping, and he tells her tells her that there's a girl over sleeping on the couch. And I love this dialogue. She goes, so why is she sleeping on the couch? He goes, you ask her. <laughs> leaves. And leaves. <laughs> you ask her. <laughs> it leaves in the scene. In the scene. Next morning, they're in the diner. All the sister... Uh, oh, well, no, the no. sister said that, like... Oh, no, no. Ellen's he boyfriend. Ma- uh, McCoy and the sister go to the diner. So they leave to go to the diner. Uh, Tom leaves early that morning to go talk to a mechanic. It looks like he's going to talk to him about the car. And then you realize the mechanic is just an illegal weaponry dealer. And yeah. Oh, no, no. That's after he talks to Rick Moranis. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Because I think the guns come before they talk to Rick Moranis, who's the agent of said singing girl. Yeah, and also her boyfriend. Oh yeah, the sister's like, "I'm go save Ellen." And he's like, "No, I don't want to." Well, talk to her, her manager boyfriend. He has an off. He he'll offer you money, or something like that. I forgot how it went. But so, basically, he goes over there, talks to Rick Moranis. He tells Rick Moranis's character that he'll do it for ten thousand dollars, which I think is probably a lot of money in eighties past. 
Yeah, I don't know the exchange. I don't know the inflation for like alternate past. <laughs> I don't know features. that either. I imagine this is a good deal of money. Maybe enough to maybe buy a mansion or something. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't think it's that much. I think it's like enough to buy a car or something. Yeah, you could buy a car, something I don't cool. Know. So he's gonna he's gonna save it for ten thousand dollars. At which point he tells the agent Rick Moranis that he has to come with them because he grew up in that area where the bikers are from, the boomers. Yeah, the, the no, bombers. Bombers. <laughs> they all. Uh, he doesn't want to go because it's like he's paying him to do all the work. Why should he help? And he's like, you know, you're an asshole. No, he never calls him an asshole. He's just like, like this is great. You think I can just go do this myself? Yeah. <laughs> and so Rick Moranis. I, mean, I, I think we're getting too detailed here. Yeah. So basically, long story short, they all go. They all go to the, the battery. Which is the bad area of town that Rick Moranis is, the, the agent slash boyfriend. Yeah, and they go to a nightclub that's inside of a factory. Now, I really don't understand why there's a nightclub inside of a factory, but whatever. <laughs> so It just makes it more badass, I guess. Yeah, it makes it more badass. McCoy's along for a thousand bucks, I guess. Yeah, McCoy will says she'll do it. She want, No, McCoy says she wants in. He offers her 10% of his profits. And she's like, whatever, I'm homeless. I'm homeless, I'll do it. It gives you something to do other than get drunk and pick on fights with people. Namely Bill Paxton. So they join and they they go to the, the bad part of town. So now it cuts to a scene with Raven, Willem Dafoe's character. He, he's in this wonderful outfit. He's like in like this latex cult, like fabric uh, fly fishing uh, suspender boot thing that they wear. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know, we we live down in the swamp, and this is a, a something that not even the most avid of fishermen wear here. Maybe yeah. fly fishermen wear it. Yeah, like up in Colorado or some shit. Yeah, because that Where water is really are. cold. But anyway, <laughs> so him and his buddies, they go they go to see uh, poor poor Ellen, who is kidnapped and chained to a bed, chained to a bed, fresh after you know running a train, I guess. He's like, yeah, just make it, make it easy, just you know, just be in like, love with me for a week, you know, I, and I'll let you go, and we're all, yeah. we're all good. Yeah, it doesn't seem it's a I, little. A little I, I, I like to call it a rapecation. Yeah, rapecation. Yeah. Willem Dafoe offers rapecation. She seems to not be too keen on the idea. He yeah. kind of giggles and decides to go play poker. Meanwhile, our party of heroes in the the former gang's car drive to the battery and. Sneak onto the roof of the factory. Rick, Rick, Rick Moranis has to stay in the car because he's Rick Moranis. Well, he walks all the way up there with them. Because uh-huh. then the crazy bum that lives on the roof of the factory tells him where to find Raven. Yeah. And Rick Moranis has to pay him money. Then after that, Tom's like, okay, go get the, go get the car, be at the front door in 15 minutes, and I'm in 15 minutes. Yeah, you better be here in 15 minutes. So after, like, arguing and shit, Rick Moranis... Begrudgingly, disagree. I mean, agrees and goes away. And McCoy's job is to go through the front door. Go and sneak you in. You go through the front door. You go through the front door, and if you can work your way upstairs, that's fine. <laughs> that, that's is that what he said? That's the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if, if you make your way upstairs, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's his plan. Go through the front door. If you can get upstairs, that would be like I guess ideal. So McCoy goes into this place. Through the front door. Through the front door. Some punk dude hits on her. One of the uh, bombers. She hits on him back. They go upstairs. I wouldn't call it hitting back. It's like, yeah, sure. Yeah. He goes, so hey, baby, you looking for a good time? And she's like, as long as you got it. <laughs> so they go upstairs to the rape room or something. Yeah, like some dank room of no furniture. <laughs> there is no furniture. It's just a nasty scene. I imagine room. there was a sign that just said "fuck room." Yeah, <laughs> that was. She it. goes in there like tries to force a kiss on her, and she and pulls she's like, gr- no, and she goes, "Ho ho, big boy, well, let me take off my jacket." And he's like, "You can take off whatever you want." At which point, the gun is now in his face. <laughs> And then she, like, pommel strikes him, knocks him out. <laughs> oh, my God. And so she then burst into the uh, the poker room with Raven. It's like, hey, guys, what's up? What's up? I got a gun to your face. They start, all the poker players get mad because they're like, you better not take our money. And Raven's the only one who understands that this is not about the money. 
Yeah, he's like, whatever. I'll kill you later. I'll kill you later. This isn't about the money. While this is going on, Tom Cody goes up to the roof across the way. <laughs> With a modified rifle. No, just normal, like, Winchester, like... They said it was modified. Oh, whatever. Rifle. So they he starts <laughs> snipering random motorcycle guys riding around... Popping wheelies. Yeah, they're just having a good time. Popping wheelies. Ramping off of whatever in Harleys, you know. I, I something don't know I why. Would, something I would never do in a Harley, but whatever. <laughs> so he, he shoots their, their explodium filled gas tanks. Explodium. <laughs> yeah, explodium. I guess that's the fuel source in the ultimate 80s universe. I mean, these things blow up like. Have you ever tried to light a Christmas tree on fire? I mean, it just goes up like nothing. Yeah, they, they <laughs> erupt into a ball of fire and the. Cyclists fly off. So he does this for a good few minutes. <laughs> he does this for about two minutes. At which point, the entire bar is flipping out. <laughs> they don't know what's going on. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so he wor- he runs into the building through the roof or something. Yeah, there's a, a little catwalk oh, yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, fire escape. And goes and, like, unties the girl. And then goes, gets McCoy. And they take off. Now, one of the things I like most is the, uh... The singer, what's her name? Ellen? Yeah. Yeah, Ellen asks, who is McCoy? Like, when she sees McCoy, she goes, who is this? Like, it matters at this point. I mean... Yeah, and like... <laughs> what do they say to her? It's like, it's like I don't know, just... Oh. They just kind of ignore her. Yeah. Like one, <laughs> where Rick Moranis shows up just in time with the car. They all get in the car, and... Well, everyone minus Tom Cody. He's like... Tom's like, I'm gonna stay here for a minute. You guys, you meet- guys, you guys, go meet me at this overpass. <laughs> go meet me at the overpass. I'm gonna stay here by myself for a little while. So they they take off. Tom stays in the middle of like all this chaos, with all these bikers running around, getting to their motorcycles and shit. And he's just beating them <laughs> all with his rifle. Yeah, he's, not, ha- he's not shooting them. He's like hitting with the butt of the rifle, knocking them down, da- knocking them down. Just walking past him like no big thing. No big thing. At which point he finally beats up one guy, the one guy whose motorcycle hasn't blown up. He yeah. beats him off of the motorcycle, gets on it, starts it up, and he's about to leave. Well, no, before that he he, he, dra- he grabs the gun like a hammer and just beat the crap out of these pipes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like what? Yeah. So he and then, so he steals a motorcycle, gets on a motorcycle, shoots. The pipe shoots the pipe, which I guess were filled with explodium as well, and they burst into flames. At which point, yeah, Will, Willem Dafoe, Raven comes out looking all badass in his fisherman pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm gonna remember you. He like asks for his name. He tells him his name. He's like, oh, I'm gonna come for you and the girl. <laughs> and and he's like, and like Cody's like, whatever, whatever. I really don't care. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll, I'll be ready. I'll be ready. <laughs> so, takes off on the motorbike. The only thing that, about the scene that freaks me out the most is he's walking through the fire wearing plastic fisherman pants. Yeah. It's like... And then he walks back into the fire. <laughs> yeah. Walks out leave. of the fire. And he's like, hey, you're crazy. Just like me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I appreciate the way you... Uh, you handle this. It's like you, a you, dream you play, come you true. Like play, you like to play hard like me. <laughs> He's like, oh, gu- you got guns? Oh, I can get guns. I can get guns. <laughs> it's supposed to just, it's the weirdest scene because it's literally like the hero and the villain are talking. It's like, I can't wait to kick your ass. And yeah, like, they're like, yeah. And they, they take off. Yeah. So he takes off to meet them under the overpass. Meet them uh, under the overpass. They go, okay, we got to ditch the car because the cops are all after him because he set an entire factory on fire. Yeah, and so the cops are not happy that they caught the factory on fire. <laughs> uh, so they want to ditch the car. Rick Moranis is very adamant about not ditching the car, but he's not the leader. So they ditch yeah. the car in some parking garage. The girl finds out that Rick Moranis paid him to go find her. There, there's love, whatever. Who cares? Who cares about the yeah. romance? This yeah. movie ain't about the romance. Yeah, this is about awesome. You know what's, you know what's up. And so, they leave, and as they're leaving, uh, they then walk through, I guess, Whore Square? Yeah, it's a bright, colorful, like, strip area. Where they see the girl from Pee Wee's <laughs> Big Adventure. And she's like, recognizes Elle, like, oh, you're her, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they're like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah, who, what? And so it's like, she's like, oh, the cops are looking for you, you better hide. And they're like, what? Okay. Okay. So they, they, uh, they say, we need a new vehicle now. Uh, they see a bus 
They're coming down the street. No, so, Tom sees a bus coming down the street. <laughs> he walks in. Fr- he walks in front of it, holds out his hand. The van, st- the bus stops at his hand. I like to think he actually physically stopped. The bus. Yeah, it looks like he physically stopped the bus. It does look like that. So, <laughs> so, so evidently, this bus is inhabited by the van from Back to the Future. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> And so, like, hey, what's, like, what's going on here? And then they it's like, why him. are you doing this? And he shows him the gun. And he goes, like, oh. where can I take you? <laughs> I will do whatever you say. So so now the party has expanded to groupie and, uh, uh, and do An acapella band. group or whatever. An acapella group. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this acapella group, uh, I, I, I'm not sure if she's a prostitute or what? Or yeah, just, she, she's just a, a fangirl. A fangirl. Some groupie, you know, just hanging out at the mall. I yeah. guess they walk through mall land. Yeah. And so the, <laughs> the groupie and four black singers. Yeah. So they, 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 they drive around his van. They come to a roadblock. The cops get in the, the, the bus. Rick Moranis quickly pays them off. They go, oh, you paid us off too quickly. You paid us off too quickly. At which point, Tom puts the gun to the cop's face. He's like, let's do it my way. Let's do it my way. So they go outside and proceeds to make them all, all the cops go face down on the roadblock, and he (laughs) proceeds to blow up every car there. Every cop car and beat them. Take all their... Take their guns and throw them away. (laughs) Threw all their guns away, and then drove through the flaming cars. At which point they say... We need to get rid of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they drive through the city, avoiding cops. They ditch the bus. They get on a subway. And like in Grand Theft Auto Five or whatever, they lose their wanted level. So they get back to their home little neighborhood. Yeah, they get back to the home neighborhood, and everything's cool at this yeah, point. They, they all go straight to the cops' yeah, the all, office. Yeah, they all go to the police office. And Tom just goes, look, I saved her. And the cops are like, cool, you saved her. Good job. Good job. Get the hell out of town. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of town. They don't arrest him because he destroyed a roadblock, blew up like ten cop cars. Whatever. You saved saved little Miss Singer, so we let you go. We let you. We let this happen. So, uh, and at that point, one of the motorcycle guys show up and go, tells the cops, like, hey, I need to talk to you. So the cop goes and talks to Raven. Raven says, hey... I want to. I want to fight. I want to do a duel with Tom. Whatever. Blah blah blah. I want to do a duel with Tom. Don't don't interfere, and we will never mess with your neighborhood again if you don't interfere. Yeah. If he, if Tom wins, I'm I'm done. I'll, I'll just never be around. But if I but if I win, I get the girl or something goofy. No, he just wants to. The cops. The only the agreement with the cop is only to. Yeah, he, just to fight Tom. He just wants to fight Tom, and if he lets him fight Tom and don't and doesn't interfere. His gang will never come back to town, and so it's kind of like a win-win for the cop. So you're not sure if the cop's going to turn on Tom or what at this point. By this point, like Tom's every, every, burning every, every single bridge and all his yeah, party members. Yeah, everyone's pissed off at Tom. Like he, he told off McCoy. She she's pissed got at sick Adam. of him. Ellen and Rick Moranis went back to their hotel because they hate this fucking town. The acapella group is <laughs> stuck in. Uh, they just stuck in the middle of somewhere, like, oh, what do we do? And, and, they, and you gr- don't see them. And don't forget, Groupie goes with manager and singer. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so Tom goes to visit. Well, no, no, no. The cop comes and tells Tom, he's like, yeah, get out of town. Yeah. Just, just get out of here. Because he We're, we're going to arrest Raven and everyone. You just get the fuck. Just go. So, so he, Tom's like, I don't care. And <laughs> leaves and goes to talk to Ellen and her manager. Manager and Groupie girl. And what does he say to Groupie Girl when he sees her? Why the hell are you here? Why are you here? At which point she realizes the character is invalid and then disappears and is never seen again in the movie. (laughs) That is how awesome Tom is. (laughs) What are you doing here? Get out of my movie. Get out of my movie. And and she's gone. (laughs) She went went off to go see Pee Wee and be, you know... Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah. (laughs) And, she wasn't uh, that big though. She's a little girl. Yeah. Whatever. So Alan realizes that she loves Tom because Tom doesn't want the money. She, he only wants the one thousand dollars he promised McCoy, and uh, because you know he burned that bridge, but you know he still likes McCoy. He has honor. He has He's honor. honorable Western hero. Guy. And so uh, Alan realizes so Alan that she still loves the, him. Yeah. So he leaves. She chases. 
And uh, she, she chases him into the rain. And asks him, well, where were you for two years? I tried to write to you, but you never wrote back. What were you doing? What were you thinking? At which but, point, he just, just kisses her. Yeah, just, just kisses her. Yeah, he just kisses her. <laughs> he just kisses her. That's his answer. He just kisses her. And Does then takes it, her to a, I guess, a motel room. Or no, no, he goes back to his sister's house. Yeah, you know, like, they get it on. You, they just, in some, they wake, like, so he cuts to them in bed together, still wet from the rain or sweat. Just but, yeah, I'm doesn't not sure. explain what he did. But they were in bed together, <laughs> and um, he's she wants to run away with him. So mm-hmm. he goes and gets McCoy, gives her the thousand dollars, and gives her the look of like. It's time to go kick some ass. And she's all down with kicking some ass. Oh, no, no. He, he goes and tells her. Okay. Anyway, so. anyway, Tom asks McCoy. He's like, help me do something I don't want to do. And so McCoy's so, down with it. Yeah, so they So McCoy, they all, Ellen, and Tom, Tom leave on the subway to get out of town. Right. At which point, Tom goes over to McCoy. Ellen follows him. McCoy stops her. She, he's like he's like I gotta go back to Richmond, the neighborhood they were they just left, and she's like, "No, I'm going with you." And Tom turns around and punches her in the face. And McCoy catches her because that's what Tom wanted her to be there for. Yeah, so they it's basically the scene from there. There will be blood, you know. Instead of <laughs> instead of like you know Ellen being like a deaf kid and him taking off for a minute. Never to see him again, hopefully. So he goes back. He tries to get a subway back into town. The subway conductor's like, oh, no. They've got the... The the, the, the bombers the, are... <laughs> the bombers going nuts. So he just looks down the subway line and just sees fire. And so the streets <laughs> on a uh, fire. The streets are on fire. Well, the subway <laughs> platforms are on fire. <laughs> so the subway won't take her. Yeah, take so, him. so scene cuts. They go... <laughs> Back to it's the ba- cops. Ba- it's back to the cop. Like the the cop has like a big roadblock set up under the overpass where the town is. And they're all all the cops are armed. They're all armed to the teeth. And one of the phone is. Do I know? You forgot Bill Paxton's just sitting around. <laughs> like, Bill Paxton's like I ordered everyone else to shoot. Bill Paxton's like I want to watch what's going on. It's like <laughs> shut up, Bill Paxton. <laughs> I want to see what's happening. <laughs> And then, then Raven shows up, which is Willem Dafoe's character. They show up, ready for the duel, and he's like, where's Tom? He's like, I sent him home. You're going, you're getting arrested. At which point he pulls out an air horn, holds on the horn until it's out of air. <laughs> and then all the motorcycle guys, armed to the teeth, just drive down the street like a couple and of them. outnumber the cops try four to one. It's yeah. bad. And he's like, oh shit. And then Bill Paxton just takes off. He just pees his he pants just... and runs away. <laughs> At this point, Tom shows up in his car. I guess he he got it from the the parking garage. Yeah, wherever they dumped it, he got his car back, and so he drives back up. And uh, at well, which point, uh, I think what the neighborhood shows up, all armed to the teeth. Yeah, and then the the, the cop guy's like, "Okay, my method failed. Go kick his ass. Go kick his ass." <laughs> Tom's like, "Yeah, sure." So he goes over there to to have the duel with Raven. Raven's like. Looks at him going, I know what you want to do. He goes into his... I have like one... I have a special weapon for this duel. <laughs> it's those henchmen pulls out two sledgehammers. So, each of them gets a sledgehammer, and they proceed to have an epic sledgehammer duel. I can't, I can't describe how awesome this movie is. I mean... A sledgehammer duel, like right out of Bushido Blade. I mean, they, I mean, and they, it was as unruly as using sledgehammers in real life, as <laughs> awkward as just weird ripping up cement and cars and just. Yeah, they eventually both lose their sledgehammers, and Tom lays out Raven. Pretty much KO knockout. <laughs> you win, and uh, they, they they pick they, up they Raven. Pick, they pick up Raven like a little baby, put on the back of the motorcycle, and they all take off. And it, the the I guess second in command's like, "Get out of here!" He tells all the gang to leave. The fight's over. Kind oh. of like an honorable thing to do, I guess. Yeah, the neighborhood's excited. The neighborhood's happy. They're celebrating. Cut to like a concert, like the next night, I guess, or whenever. And then we see, like, the crappy doo band singing I Could Dream About You. Yes. Which I did not know the song was from this movie. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> We're like, what? This is a popular song. I mean, like, they still play that song on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like... <laughs> like, the whole song was played in its entirety. 
this is like the one bad point I think of the film is they, they try too much to have the music aspect in there. Yeah, the but it's like sandwiched on at the front and end of the movie. Oh, and the middle part at the bomber's little club in the factory. Well, there's the bomber part, and then there's also the part where they, when they're walking through Horrorville. Oh yeah, there's like a random like Scooby Doo esque music video montage scene as as everyone's walking through Horror Town and gets but so, so yeah, funny. these musical parts are a little they feel a little tacked on. They feel but, yeah, a little tacked on and um, everything's good. Rick Moranis is talking, so is talking to, to Tom's like you know what she loves you. I can accept that. I'm still gonna make a lot of money off of managing her. Yeah, and he and he, he he's like yeah, and this band's pretty good too. I want to be fucking rich. Tom gives her a kiss goodbye, saying, like, I gotta go. Well, he tells him that... Oh, he tells Rick Moranis that... He's like, I can't take care of her like you can take care of her. I'm a drifter. I'm a drifter. I'm not I'm not good for her. I'm not good for nothing. And he, so he leaves, and Rick, Rick Moranis says, thank you. And, he's, and I think he says something like, at least that's something. Yeah. <laughs> and so he says goodbye to Ellen. She's all upset, and... She sings an epic song. She sings of, an epic song... Which everyone sings together. He leaves and he, begins walking down the streets. Yeah, like this is all during like a whole like full on song is played. Yeah, they're playing the full song. Like full on like four minute song. He runs into McCoy like going, hey I found a car. And it was like his It's Tom's car. old car. <laughs> Tom's old stolen car. So it's a double stolen car. And she's like, hey you need a ride? And he's like, sure. Yeah, you're, I'm, you're still not my type. And then they drive off into the sunset. The sunset under an overpass. <laughs> under an overpass. And then the credits roll, and it's like, what? <laughs> this movie is just amazing. I, yeah. I, oh, man, I mean... <laughs> Sledgehammer duel. Sledgehammer duel. Slapping someone until they pass out. Uh, <laughs> blowing up motorcycles with a rifle. Just having the villain walk out of the fire saying, you, you good. We're gonna you, fight. You my buddy. We're gonna fight the sledgehammer duel later. <laughs> oh my yeah, it, god! It, the pace is really brisk. Yeah, it's the, fast. The, dial, the dialogue's really snappy, but not trying to be not like snappy as in like Gilmore Girls or some shit, or like a Kevin Smith movie where they're trying to sound really fucking smart. It's more like yeah, okay. Let's do. It's like get on the roof and shoot them. Get up into the second floor if you can. We're gonna blow stuff up. Instead of explaining shit, I'm just gonna kiss you. Where were you for two years? <laughs> I, I tried writing. You never wrote back. What happened? Kisses it. Yeah. That's it. That's what happened. Yeah. The hero's obviously like a freaking homage to like Clint Eastwood, man with no name kind of guy. And it's just, McCoy was played by the uh, the woman who was uh, the, girlfriend. the girlfriend and Uncle Buck. Overall, I was very impressed by this movie and, and it would suggest this to any cult movie uh, lover. Screw that. I, I suggest to anybody. Anyone? Yeah, anybody. If it's, they don't like it, then you know what? They don't need to talk to me. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. I, I did I not... I mean, I, I can understand why like bombed in the theater. Like, the guy and the girl don't stay together. He just kind of wanders they, off. They kept playing music throughout the entire movie. Yeah, like, the, I felt like that, that crap was just so tacked on. I just would rather it be weird. Like, I think I think it was trying to go for with, like, Six String Samurai tried to do... I guess it did a little bit better, but... Mm -hmm. it, it was because it was more abstract, I guess. Yeah. Like, the movie had, like, a cohesive plot, and so, like, the rock and roll fable aspect kind of just felt tacked on and goofy. I still enjoyed the movie. Yes. Very yeah. much. D Very don't, much. don't mind my bitching. I really loved the movie. Yeah, this movie was pretty fantastic. <laughs> it was just, just the action was just nonstop, and... It, it just... The, 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 the cutaways was, like, really, like... And anything we thought was going to happen... Just did happen. Like, the part where when the groupie was in there with the agent, I was like, what is she doing here? At and which point, he walks in and goes, what are you doing here? And, and she, she leaves. And never I, shows up in the movie again. Amazing. Amazing. Like, we're like, oh, who's going to pay for the fucking window he just broke? And the girl, and the, his sister's like, you gonna, you going to pay for that window? Yeah, I mean, it's just like, wow. Everything makes sense. I don't know who wrote it. I don't, like... The, uh, the, the director and some other guy wrote God, it. God. The same it. guy who uh, helped him write 48 Hours and stuff. That's just amazing. Yeah. I need Good to check dialogue. out more of his... Yeah. Good dialogue. Only to, only to be outdone by Deadwood, which he did later on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever hasn't seen Deadwood yet, wow. Yeah, well, it ended stupid. But... I know. Don't, the first season. We'll just watch the first season. Just watch the first season. Just assume they all died of, like, the plague or something. <laughs> <laughs> they, died, they died of a gold rush. I don't know. <laughs> 
but yeah, so it was a pretty uh, good shot. So uh, that was not actually deep hurting. That was actually a pretty awesome movie. Yeah, no. I was expecting it. The to... deep hurting from this podcast comes from listening to us talk. Oh, it's true. not from the movies we're watching. Very true. Well, I'm sorry. We're not one of stupid. Ooh, we're gonna review bad movies to be all ironic. It's like no, we're gonna review movies that we like, and then ones that we might not like. Yeah, I mean, this was a complete surprise. Yeah, I was expecting we were, a cheesy, goofy movie. We were expecting Indie Geist too. I mean, like this was much better. Yeah, I was expecting like some kind of box office bomb, like it was, but it turned out to be like pretty decent. Kind of like the last action hero. Expected it to be retarded. It was retarded, but it was like enjoyable. It's awesome, retarded. It wasn't full retard. We thought it would be. But anyway, that's deep hurting. Do we have any amendments from last time? I don't know. No one, no one left comments or anything. Rada, yeah. Uh, check it. We, we're on iTunes now. What? Yeah, so search us on iTunes, however the hell you do that. I post it on Twitter. We're on Twitter at uh, deep underscore hurting. Okay. Um, so who has the real deep hurting? I don't know. Some jerk. Well, God. I'm going to call him out one day. Oh, they can just bite me. I don't know. But anyway. Uh, I'm on Twitter as a super deformed, by the way. I'm on Twitter as Bob of the Magic One, but don't expect me to answer. Yeah, you can you can tweet me, and I'll just send back some kind of political tweet or something just stupid. So I guess that's episode two. It's been about an hour.